Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Good morning and welcome back to our morning devotion today, Thursday, April 30th. Uh, I'm recording this on Wednesday, so I finally know my vicarage placement. I'm going to be out at St. Paul's Lutheran Church in Union, Missouri, just about 20 miles away, uh, 20 minutes, I mean, away from where I grew up. So really excited for that. Um, <laughs> it's fun for the first time in like two in two months. Like there's actually something to look forward to and like work towards. Uh, but there's still two weeks of class left, so I have to deal with that. Anyway, uh, today we uh, turn to our Lord and to His Word in our morning devotion found on page 295 of your hymnal. I ask you to join me in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. In the morning, O Lord, you hear my voice. In the morning, I prepare a sacrifice for you and watch. My mouth is filled with your praise and with your glory all the day. O Lord, open my lips and my mouth will declare your praise. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Our psalm for today is Psalm 113. Psalm 113. (laughs) Praise the Lord, praise, O servants of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord. From this time forth and forevermore, from the rising of the sun to its setting, the name of the Lord is to be praised. The Lord is high above all nations, and his glory above the heavens. Who is like the Lord our God, who is seated on high, who looks far down on the heavens and the earth, He raises the poor from the dust and lifts the needy from the ash heap to make them sit with princes, with the princes of his people. He gives the barren woman a home, making her the joyous mother of children. Praise the Lord. Let us pray. Blessed be the Son of David, who came in the name of the Lord to establish a kingdom of grace on earth, who has also called us and made us citizens of his kingdom, partakers of his grace. May he, our King, by his good spirit, so guide and govern us as to bring us out of this world so full of sin into that eternal kingdom wherein dwells righteousness forever. Amen. Our Old Testament reading today continues in the book of Exodus, starting at chapter 38, uh, where we hear today about the great bounty that was brought and given for the building of a tabernacle by the people of Israel and for all of its furniture and for the dressings of the priests. So, Exodus 38, starting at the 21st chapter. These are the records of the tabernacle, the tabernacle of a testimony, as they were recorded at the commandment of Moses the responsibility of the Levites under the direction of Ithamar, the son of Aaron, the priest. Bezalel, the son of Uri, son of Hur, of the tribe of Judah, made all that the Lord commanded Moses. And with him was Aholiab, the son of Ahizamach, of the tribe of Dan, an engraver and designer and embroiderer in blue and purple and scarlet yarns and fine twisted linen. All the gold that was used for the work In all the construction of the sanctuary, the gold from the offering was twenty-nine talents and seven hundred and thirty shekels by the shekel of the sanctuary. The silver from those of the congregation who were recorded as a hundred talents and one thousand seven hundred and seventy-five shekels by the shekel of the sanctuary. A becca, a head, that is half a shekel by the shekel of the sanctuary, for everyone who was listed in the records from 25 years old and upward, for 603,550 men. The hundred talents of silver were for casting the base of the sanctuary and the bases of the veil, a hundred bases for the hundred talents, a talent, a base. And of the 1,775 shekels, he made hooks for the pillars and overlaid their capitals and made fillets for them. 
the bronze that was offered was 70 talents and 2,400 shekels. With it, he made the bases for the entrance of the tent of meeting, the bronze altar, and the bronze grating for it, and all the utensils of the altar, the bases around the court, and the bases of the gate of the court, all the pegs of the tabernacle, and all the pegs around the court. From the blue and purple and scarlet yarns, they made finely woven garments for ministering in the holy place. They made the holy garments for Aaron, as the Lord had commanded Moses. He made the ephod of gold, blue and purple and scarlet yarns and fine twined linen. And they hammered out gold leaf, and he cut it into threads to work into the blue and purple and the scarlet yarns, and into the fine twined linen, in skilled design. They made for the ephod attaching shoulder pieces, joined to it at its two edges. And the skillfully woven band on it was one piece with it, and made like it, of gold, blue, purple, and scarlet yarns, and fine twined linen, as the Lord had commanded Moses. They made the onyx stones, enclosed in settings of gold filigree, and engraved like the engravings of a signet, according to the names of the Son of Israel. And he set them on the shoulder pieces of the ephod, to be stones of remembrance for the sons of Israel, as the Lord had commanded Moses. He made the breastpiece in skilled work in the style of the ephod of gold, blue, and purple, and scarlet yarns, and fine twined linen. It was square. They made, <clears throat> they made the breastpiece doubled, a span its length, and a span its breadth when doubled. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And our New Testament reading continues in the book of Luke, the 8th chapter today. Soon afterward, Jesus went on through cities and villages, proclaiming and bringing the good news of the kingdom of God. And the twelve were with him, and also some women who had been healed of evil spirits and infirmities. Mary, called Magdalene, from whom seven demons had gone out, and Joanna, the wife of Shusa, Herod's household manager, and Susanna, and many others who provided for them out of their means. And when a great crowd was gathering, and people from town after town came to Jesus, he said in a parable, A sower went out to sow his seed, and as he sowed, some fell along the path and was trampled underfoot, and the birds of the air devoured it. And some fell on the rock, and as it grew up, it withered away, because it had no moisture. And some fell among thorns, and the thorns grew up with it and choked it. And some fell into good soil, and grew and yielded a hundredfold. As he said these things, he called out, He who has ears to hear, let him hear. And when his disciples asked him what this parable meant, he said, To you it has been given to know the secrets of the kingdom of God, but for others they are in parables, so that seeing they may not see, and hearing they may not understand. Now the parable is this, the seed is the word of God. The ones along the path are those who have heard. Then the devil comes and takes away the word from their ears so that they may not believe and be saved. And the ones on the rock are those who, when they hear the word, receive it with joy. But they have no root. They believe for a little while and in time of testing fall away. And as for what fell among the thorns, they are those who hear but as they go on their way, they are choked by the cares and riches and pleasures of life, and their fruit does not mature. As for that in the good soil, they are those who, hearing the word, hold it fast in an honest and good heart, and bear fruit with patience. No one, after lighting a lamp, covers it with a jar or puts it under a bed, but he puts it on a stand, so that those who enter may see the light. For nothing is hidden that will not be made manifest, nor is anything secret that will not be known and come to light. Take care then how you hear, for to the one who has, more will be given, and from the one who has not, even what he thinks that he has will be taken away. Then his mother and his brothers came to him, but they could not reach him because of the crowd. And he was told, Your mother and your brothers are standing outside, desiring to see you. But he answered them, My mother and my brothers are those who hear the word of God and do it. 
This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Today for our catechism reading, we move on from baptism into the small catechism's explanations on confession. So today we do the first three questions regarding confession found on page 326 of your hymnal. What is confession? Confession has two parts. First, that we confess our sins, and second, that we receive absolution, that is, forgiveness, from the pastor as from God himself, not doubting, but firmly believing that by it our sins are forgiven before God in heaven. What sin should we confess? Before God, we should plead guilty of all sins, even those we are not aware of, as we do in the Lord's Prayer. But before the pastor, we should confess only those sins which we know and feel in our hearts. Which are these? Consider your place in life according to the Ten Commandments. Are you a father, mother, son, daughter, husband, wife, or worker? Have you been disobedient, unfaithful, or lazy? Have you been hot-tempered, rude, or quarrelsome? Have you hurt someone by your words or deeds? Have you stolen, been negligent, wasted anything, or done any harm? We move on to confess our faith using the words of the Nicene Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate, he suffered and was buried. And the third day he rose again, according to the scriptures, and ascended into heaven, and sits at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. And now we turn to our God in prayer, praying the prayer that our Lord Jesus Christ has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And now I invite you to pause the video to lift up your own prayers to our God. Our devotion this morning continues back on page 295 of your hymnal. Almighty God, merciful Father, who created and completed all things, on this day, when the work of our calling begins anew, we implore you to create its beginning, direct its continuance, and bless its end, that our doings may be preserved from sin, our life may be sanctified, and our work this day be well-pleasing to you. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And we conclude our devotion this morning with Luther's morning prayer. I thank you, my Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have kept me this night from all harm and danger. And I pray that you would keep me this day also from sin and every evil, that all my doings in life may please you. For into your hands I commend myself, my body and soul, and all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. And Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Again, thank you for joining me today. Uh, It was fun to sit down and like put away some of the excitement from Vicarage and get ready to do this. 
there is musical meditation right now. I haven't picked it out. I'm sure it'll be great. Uh, it'll be in a link here and a link down below in the description. Uh, I hope you enjoy it, and I hope you have a great day. Bye.